everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahey, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and Patreon, and contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and DaySpringDiscussions at gmail.com. Well, happy Thursday, everyone. It's a gloomy Thursday here in Austin, Texas. Looks like it's about to pour down rain any minute now, and that's fine with me. I'm kind of stuck at home for a little while. I had a little bit of car trouble, so I took my car into the shop to, to get it, take a look at. Uh, and they said it might be a couple hours before they get back to me, so I decided to take a lift back to my house, uh, which is fine. You know, I got to go to work in a little while, but this gives me a chance to exercise and, of course, do a podcast. Now, as I said on Tuesday, I had the time to do a few more podcasts last week, but I didn't do it mainly because I felt like it was a slow news week. Nothing really worthy of being like talked about ad nauseum. This week, you know, you got a few things going on. Tomorrow, Netflix premieres Lost in Space, their new show based off the older show and movie. I am definitely going to check that out. One thing that I been trying to do with the Netflix shows is not binge watch them all in like a day or so. What I did with Jessica Jones season two was I watched just one a day. And I think that's what I'm going to do with Lost in Space. Kind of spread out, enjoy it a little more. So I probably won't get to a full review of that show by next week. Maybe by the tail end of next week. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I got a lot of TV to catch up on. I haven't really watched any shows this week. So I'm two weeks behind on Krypton. I got to watch the CW shows. I got Legion. I got some sitcoms, mainly because I've been trying to get through also the MCU movies. I've been going through all the MCU movies. I just finished Phase 2 last night, so now I'm about to start Phase 3 with two weeks to go till Avengers Infinity War. I'm going to get more into that in just a few minutes, guys. But first, the number one topic I want to talk about today is the Titans TV show. So Warner Brothers has decided to make their own streaming service. Looks like they're going to include a lot of their DC properties. It's my hope that they're going to put all the animated series, all the movies, anything they've done with the DC and put it all on one channel. They've already got my money because they're coming out with Young Justice Season 3 strictly on their streaming service. I'm a big fan of Young Justice. I cannot wait to see Season 3, especially since all the original cast and crew and showrunners are coming back to do it, so I'm excited for that. So they definitely have my money already for the streaming service. But another thing they're doing is a live-action Titans TV series. So this series is going to include kind of the core Teen Titans or the most infamous Teen Titans, minus Cyborg, who's being used in the movies. You got uh, Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Robin. You got Starfire. You got Beast Boy. And then you got Raven. These are kind of the famous Teen Titans. They're not the original Teen Titans. Uh, back in the day, you had Robin, Wonder Girl, Speedy, um, what is it, Kid Flash, and then Aqualad. Those are, you know, the Teen Titans that I like. They're featured now in the comic book Titans. And I like them because as a kid reading comic books, you kind of last on these young heroes. I mean, Robin and all these people were just to get kids more into comics. So I grew up with Robin, the many iterations of Robin. And these characters, I like growing up with them. I like that in Titans now, they've known each other for years. They've grown up with each other. They have relationships. They're best friends. They're family. It's a little more tight-knit group than what Justice League is. Now, with these guys, you had George Perez, after the original Teen Titans, come out with the new Teen Titans. And that's what really hit big was, like I said, they... Got a new crew with Starfire and Raven and Beast Boy, and it really took off after that. Much like kind of with X-Men, you had the original X-Men, Beast, Angel, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Iceman. But X-Men really didn't take off until giant Size X-Men when they added Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Storm, Colossus, that kind of sort of thing. So these guys have kind of been the core Teen Titans or the poster group for the Titans. They've been featured on the animated series, and of course you got Teen Titans Go, which my daughter loves. The streaming service is set to premiere sometime later this year, maybe early next year, and they're going to come out with this show and Young Justice and I think a few other things. There's some talk of a Harley Quinn show going on as well. I don't know, but some leaked photos have surfaced 
on the show. It looks like, according to the photos, it might be on episode 9 of the series. Now, we've gotten some official photos of Robin, a.k.a. Dick Grayson, from Warner Brothers in D.C., and it looks cool. It's a promo picture. It's meant to be seen for the public, meant to get you excited. These are leaked photos on set, and on it, we see Starfire, who is played by, what's her name? Uh, where's the actress here? Anna Dippos? I, I totally mispronounced her. And then you also have Ryan Potter as Beast Boy, and then you have Tegan Croft as Raven. And the minute these photos surfaced, fans went a little nuts. Um, to say they're bad is an understatement. But before we freak out, let's remember, these are leaked photos. These are not official photos. Um, Starfire, she's in a green dress with a red wig. Looks more like a drag queen than a space alien. You have Beast Boy. He's got clear skin with just green hair. And then Raven, of course, just looks like a goth chick. Totally horrible pictures, but we have to put them in context, okay? These are not official photos. It's my hope, and a hope of a lot of other people, that they're going to CGI Starfire with orange skin. They're going to CGI Beast Boy looking a little greener. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see because that's what it is. These are leaked photos, unofficial photos. They're not finished photos, okay? And people flip out when you have these leaked photos of, say, Captain Marvel or Shazam or something that is unofficial, that is unfinished. If these photos turn out to be what we get with Titans, I will be upset. But let's also remember that the way they look is half the battle. The other half is the story and the acting. If this is a good story, which I think we are, they said we're going to get some Doom Patrol. One of the episodes is titled Jason Todd. We might get some good stories in there. And then, of course, the acting. I'm not familiar with almost any of these actors and actresses, but I'm you know, willing to give them a little faith that they were picked out of thousands of other actors and actresses to play these parts. Now, like I said, you had the original Teen Titans with Aqualad and Speedy and Kid Flash. Then you have the new Teen Titans with Cyborg, Starfire. To me, I got into Teen Titans back when Jeff Johns took over, and you had um, Impulse, who turned into Kid Flash, Robin, which was Tim Drake, and then you had Superboy, a.k.a. Connor Kent. That's the Teen Titans that I really got into. They were being mentored at the time by Beast Boy and Starfire and Cyborg. Those are my Teen Titans. So, you know, with the cartoon iterations and stuff like that, I like the characters, I know the characters, but that's what I like about Teen Titans. With this, I'm definitely going to watch the show because, again, I like the characters, I like Teen Titans. I don't know how it's going to go, guys. I mean, we really don't know until we get a trailer. I just hope it's not another Inhumans. I hope it's not something where the company, such as Warner Brothers, goes half-assed, makes it look cheap because it's low production value, and is not what it should be. That's my fear. And if they give us a good story and decent acting, I mean, for God's sakes, if this is how Starfire is going to look, if I watch a trailer for this show and that's what Starfire is, nope, 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 okay? You, you want to do these shows? I get it. That's great. But if you want to do it, you've got to go all in. And I know you have a budget to work with. But if you're not going to make Starfire with her orange skin in not as great as, say, Drax or Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy, but at least give her some orange skin, spray paint, I don't care. Make her look decent. Don't make her look like a drag queen. And again, I'm flipping out over leaked photos, unfinished photos, unfinished production. It could be anything, guys. But we're going to keep an eye on this. Of course, when the first trailer for Titans comes out, you can be sure I'm going to talk about it. But time for you to fire back. Let me know what you think about these photos. Do you think these are just leaked photos and people are flipping out for nothing? Or does this get you worried about the show? Let me know. All right, guys. So next up, we are officially on the countdown. We have, what, two weeks? Today will be two weeks, actually. Um, I am not actually going to opening night. 
I have my daughter's kindergarten registration that night. So anyone who says I ever have my priorities wrong, I'm going to reference this moment for the rest of my life where I skipped opening night of Avengers Infinity War to go to my daughter's kindergarten registration, okay? I don't want to hear from anybody. Not my friends, not my wife, not my family. Priorities, these are set, okay? I'm going Friday night, first showing, looking forward to it. So excited to see this movie. The previews look awesome. Like I said, I'm going through the MCU movies right now as kind of a review. I cannot get enough of this excitement. It's 10 years in the making. I still remember sitting down and watching Iron Man 10 years ago, and I had heard online that there was a post credit scene with Nick Fury, and I'm sitting there, and everyone in the theater starts to get up, and this guy looks at me. He's like, what's he doing? I'm like, sit down, sit down, sit down. He's like, oh, is there something? I'm like, yeah, there's something. Sit down. And Nick Fury says, I'm here to talk about the Avengers Initiative. Boom. I blew up. I was so excited. My Lisa, who wasn't my wife at the time, but was looking at me like, you cray-cray. Yes, it was awesome. Also, there was that time where in the Thor movie, you had that appearance by Hawkeye, and I started flipping out. Another time, she looked at me in theater and was like, what is your deal? Let's just say there are multiple times when I'm watching comic book movies where I'm geeking out over an Easter egg or an appearance of a new character, and my wife, who has no idea what I'm geeking out about, is like, you're crazy. Why the hell did I marry you? But in any event, uh, I'm straight off here, guys. So as we're looping towards the movie, people are talking about Avengers 4. So that comes out in about a year, and no one's quite sure what it is. We have no idea what this fourth Avengers film is that's already been shot, which is crazy. People are thinking, of course, that at the end of Avengers Infinity War, we might get a post credit scene that's going to explain it. Maybe just the end of the film of Infinity War is going to explain it. And we might even get an official title, say, at the end of the credits of Avengers Infinity War. We don't know. But the Russo brothers, of course, doing their thing, doing their press tour for Infinity War. These guys did Captain America Civil War. They did Winter Soldier, two of my favorite movies in the MCU. I totally trust them with this film. And they're talking about what might come after the third and fourth Avengers films. The French site Internaut, I'm totally sure I totally butchered that, asked about the possibilities for Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And of course, while they're all speculating, they said, quote, We'll say that if Fox deal goes through with Disney, there's a lot more characters to work with all of a sudden. It will be interesting to do something like Secret Wars. Now, for those of you who don't know, Secret Wars was a publishing event that Marvel did between 1984 and 1985, which featured a crossover of the Avengers, X-Men, and Fantastic Four, where a cosmic entity called the Beyonder teleported all the characters against their will to a planet called Battleworld, on which these characters, of course, do battle. It's most famous for introducing the black symbiote suit that Spider-Man wore, which eventually became Venom. Now, there's, of course, rumors going around that they're going into space here with Infinity War, and maybe Peter Parker picks up the black symbiote suit in this film, which would set up the Venom film coming up in October. We don't know. Total rumors. No one has no idea. It's just something that's going around. Now, Marvel went back and they did another version of Secret Wars a couple years ago. I think it was like two years ago, maybe, they did a Secret Wars where it was basically all the heroes battling, but they were battling different versions of themselves. You had, uh, you know, Thor with seven different versions of himself, and Spider-Man getting to meet Ultimate Spider-Man, aka Miles Morales. And when that all settled, you had one world that all the characters lived in, and kind of like that's how we got Miles Morales in the basic Marvel world. It was almost like DC doing Crisis on Infinite Earths where you had all these multiple realities and it kind of tied everything up to give you one world. That's kind of what it was. So whether they're talking Secret Wars as in that event or the older event, I don't know. I know Secret Wars, it could be cool, but at the same time, I don't want to see the heroes battle each other anymore. We had Civil War. I get it. I'm done with that. We can move on from there. Now, really what I talk about is 
what is Avengers 4? There is a lot of rumors going around. People are talking Secret Wars. People are talking Secret Invasion. People are talking now Annihilation. All these big Marvel events that it could be. I think it'd be cool to see Secret Invasion because in between Infinity War and Avengers 4, you get Ant-Man and the Wasp, which comes out in July. And then the other one in between is Captain Marvel. And that's, I think, going to be a key interesting one because it takes place in the 90s. It goes cosmic, given that it's Captain Marvel, but also we know that's going to feature the Skrulls, shape-shifting aliens that, in Secret Invasion, infiltrated the Marvel Universe, and people had to figure out who is a Skrull, who is real, who's on their side, who's the bad guy, all that, you know, mystery spy stuff. And I think it'd be a cool event to do for Phase 4. Annihilation, on the other hand, was a very cosmic event where Thanos actually had to team up with the Marvel heroes to defeat something worse. That could be a good twist if, you know, Thanos sticks around for Avengers 4. That could be something as well, especially since we're going bigger, going cosmic with Thanos bringing to the Guardians of the Galaxy for Infinity War. It's all speculation at this point. I think Secret Invasion would be cool. Annihilation, I feel like it's just too much. I really can't see how that would be reverence and then still keep the popular characters like Iron Man, Captain America as an important part of the storyline. Infinity War still keeps them in there because Thanos is coming to Earth and he's attacking the heroes. You take the battle away from Earth, you have a lot more powerful beings in the Marvel Universe than Iron Man and Captain America, so I don't see how they could still be important in a story like Annihilation. Uh, Secret Invasion, I can see it though. That's where my money would be. I mean, it's it might make the most sense, especially if you're going to introduce the scrolls in a film before it, and then you come to find out some of our favorite heroes or characters have already been a scroll for this entire journey through the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I did have a theory I brought up, I think it was last week or so, Agent Maria Hill, a.k.a. played by Colby Smulders, I'm going to say is a scroll. I'm calling it right now. I don't think anybody higher up like Nick Fury or Captain America or even, say, Hawkeye is a scroll, but a character who's somewhat been throughout the entire cinematic universe, I can see that happening. That's my theory, and I'm going to stick through it for another year. I'm probably wrong, but that's when I go off, guys. But you guys let me know who do you think is a scroll. But also, more importantly, what do you think Avengers 4 will be? Do you think Secret Invasion, Secret Wars? Let me know. Fire back in the social media group at Gmail. Let me know what your theories are. Do you buy into the Spider-Man symbiote theory as well? Who do you think is going to die? We're coming down to the wire, guys. The world premiere of Infinity War is less than two weeks away. The rest of us regular Joe Schmoes get to see it a couple days later. It's going to be one big ball of fun, and I am just so excited about that. But before that, we get another big event. Next week on Wednesday, Action Comics number 1000 comes out. That's right. It is the 80th anniversary of not only Superman, but also the 40th anniversary of the original Christopher Reeves film. So Wednesday, I'm planning a party. I'm going to have a couple friends over, not working. We're going to the comic book store to pick up Action Comics 1000. Grab some food, head back to my place here. We're watching Superman movies and also uh, taking some kryptonite shots, kryptonite-themed alcohol, and it's just going to be one big bag of fun. I'm excited to celebrate Superman. 80 years of the original superhero. It's definitely a milestone in not only comic books, but in superheroes, in pop culture, this is where it is, guys. So I'm excited. Go pick up Action Comics 1000 on Wednesday. There are many variants with that. So go do that. But also head over to the Facebook group. I'm doing a poll every day in honor of it. Yesterday I did Best Superman Movie. Today I put up Best Superman TV Show. Smallville. Lois and Clark. Adventures of Superman with George Reeves. Superman the Animated Series. And yes, I put Krypton on there. It's only four episodes in, but... I wanted to try to fill out the category as much as I could. So fire back on that. Put your vote up. Let me know what you think the best Superman TV show is. Also, I think tomorrow 
In the coming days, I'm going to do best Superman villain. I'll do best love interest. That's right, Lois Lane, Lana Lang, Wonder Woman. Who do you think is the best love interest for Superman? Uh, whole week long, leading to Wednesday, I'm going to have that up. So go to the Facebook group and see that. And that's it for me today, guys. I'm going to finish up the show, get this published, get showered, and hopefully get my car back so I can get to work. Um, I don't know if I'll do a show Saturday or not. Possibly. I want to do an MCU review um, either probably next week. I want to sit down maybe with Lisa and go through kind of the experience, this 10-year journey we've been on with the Marvel Cinematic Universe leading to Infinity War. I'm going to talk about kind of what I did today about how I felt after I watched each film and kind of the journey that I've been on with this, much like the rest of you have. So that's it for me today, guys. Until next time, may the Force be with us all.